Now you can also do this with your calculator. It has a really cool function in it. So this one right here is your finance solver. So this is a uh, little trick here. If you're using TI-84, it's called the TVM solver. That's what it may be also called. Check with your calculator what it's called, okay? But this one right here, we're gonna define this thing right here. We're gonna have very similar here. But let's just take a look and see if we can do this here. So under calculator, which I am in now, I'm in a calculator page. I wanna press the menu, I do finance, and then I choose the finance solver. Like I said, if you're using a TI-84, it's called the TVM solver. Either way, there's a lot of these different variables. And the good news is, notice it tells you what each of them means, which is really nice. So these are different things, right? It's a number of payments, annual interest rate, whatever. So let's just say we want to do the same exact uh, example here. If we want to do the same example as we had before, um, remember, we're just going to have to figure out what the different numbers are going to be here. Now, this is the interesting one, though. It's going to be this one. Number of payments. Remember, in 30 years, you're making 12 payments per year. So this is the only hard part is that you have to put an N equals the total number of payments is 30 years times 12 payments per year. So that's the one thing you're going to have to know about. Okay, the annual interest rate, that's still 7.1. So we put that in. Present value is going to be, uh, we can put in, oh, we don't know actually, we want that. I'll put a star by it. Payment amount. This is because what if you make monthly payments? What if you add to this? In this case, we're not going to do any. And you usually just put in a zero here. But actually for our own house loan, this was really important. My wife and I were actually looking at actual payments. So here we're saying, what will we be paying every month? We weren't just putting in one investment and leaving it be. We were actually making payments every month. Therefore, you can actually build up a lot more money a lot faster. So the way to really invest for real is to always make monthly payments. But the stuff we do in uh, math studies, we just always make the payment amount zero. And there we go. So future value. We want it to be a million. Payments per year, we're going to just call that, uh, well, it's normally zero, but we can just make it 12 and we can make this 12. Usually you make these two numbers here the same, but we're not actually technically making any payments, but it likes it if you make the two the same. There is an interesting thing is that either PV or FV, one must be negative. Okay? In other words, one must be negative. It's just the way it calculates, just the way it does its math. So you can call the present value negative, or you can call the future value negative in a million. It doesn't matter. So just don't be tripped up when you get one answer that's a negative. Or if ever you're trying to solve with all this and you have two things that are positive, it'll tell you error. If you're getting an error in what you're doing with your finance solver, it's probably because your PV and your FV are both positive. This is really, really important, okay? You must make one of them negative one must be negative. Okay, I'm writing it again because it's that important. And that's about it. So what you do with this, then you put it into your calculator. So in this case right here, uh, let me just put them all in here. So let's just see, let's make it a little bit smaller here. So I'm gonna put in all this stuff. So my, uh, this one right here is going to be uh, 360. I scroll down. Uh, interest rate is 7.1. It's really important, I'm just gonna skip the PV for now, okay? My payment amount is gonna be zero. My future value is gonna be a million. My payments per year is gonna be 12. My, whoa, about there. 12. Yes. What have I done here? What? I don't know what happened here. Something really weird happened here. One, two, three. There we go. Payments, zero, future value. Actually, we don't know this. I don't know why, it's just because on my own keyboard here, something really weird happened. So I just gotta press, uh, normally this doesn't happen on your own calculator because it's super easy. There you go. So let's just see if this right here works. So we've got all our numbers, I hope. We've got everything put in here. We've got our uh, interest right here. Let's just see, do we have everything we needed? So 367.1, present value, we we'll leave it blank. This is zero, this is a million. And we got our payments per year, yep. Yeah. So what you do is you go to the thing you want. In this case, if I want present value, I put my cursor there and then I press enter. It'll calculate what's needed. Do you notice it gave me a negative, but there's no reason to freak out. Okay, remember one just has to be negative, so ignore it. Look, it's 119 
and it's five, eight, let's say that rounds to a six. So one, one, nine, five, eight, six. Hey, what did we have before? That's pretty awesome. So that's how you can do this one right here. Uh, let's do another example here. Let's do one here. You invest 500,000 Canadian for N years. You do it at an annual interest rate of 5.1. It's compounded weekly. Remember, if it's weekly, your compounding periods per year is going to be 52. It's going to be 52 weeks in a year. After X years, it's now worth this. So let's use the equation and the TVM solver or the finance solver to do it. If we use the equation, we just have to put in the numbers here. So let's see here. Future value is 200,000. Present value is 50,000. Interest rate as a percent is 5.1. K is, remember what K is. And if you're not sure, you go back and you read it. K is the number of periods per year. So we look that up and we say, well, K then is uh, 52. N is the number of years. So in this case right here, that's my X. That's what I want to find. So I'll put all this into this. So I'd say 200,000 equals present value, which is 50,000, times 1 plus r, which is 5.1, over 100 times k, so that would be 5200, zero, zero, right, because I moved my decimal over, all that to the power of k, which is 52, times x. Here's the problem. i got to solve for x. Ugh, that looks really gross. I better use my calculator. So I'm going to do a new page. So plus page here. Oops, I think i got to exit first new page. I'm just going to do a regular calculator here and I'm going to ask my calculator to do n solve. So I'm going to do menu, algebra, numerical solve. I'm just going to ask it to do this whole thing for me because I don't like this equation. So I'm just going to ask my calculator to solve it all for me. So this right here times, mm, open bracket, 1 plus, I need a fraction, I do 5.1 over Five two zero zero. Go to the right. Go to the right by one more. Bring it to the power of fifty two x. I go to the right. I do comma. I'm gonna put an x. I get a number of twenty seven point two years. So here I get x equals twenty seven point two years. So that was one way to solve this. So that's not so bad, except you had to use nSolve because it got a little bit gross. Another way to do it is use your finance solver. You just have to remember, though, this n is different. You have to be really, really careful. Okay, this n was the number of years. This is the number of payments. So you got to think about this carefully, okay? So we're going to see if we can figure this out here. This, it turns out, we're going to look for this because the number of years is contained with this. Remember, n is equal to the uh, 52 times per year times the number of years. This is really what's contained here. This is 52 times the number of years. We're going to find this. This is, Here's what we want to solve for this. We're going to solve for that. Let's put an i. What's the i value? i is 5.1. Present value, we can put in 50,000. Payment is zero. We're making no monthly payments. Uh, future value, I mean, we're not adding extra. We're just investing one thing. Uh, future value is going to be 200,000. Your payments per year is going to be, well, everything's just going to be 52, right? Because it's done uh, weekly. Here's the interesting part. If I just run it like this, I actually want to show you what will happen. Okay, so we go right here. And remember, we're not sure what to do. We go to menu and do finance. Finance solver. Let's put in these things here. So here I'm going to delete that. I'm going to put in uh, 5.1 here. Uh, present value, I'm going to put in 50,000. I'm going to show you, actually, I'm going to on purpose make a mistake, okay? I'm going to show you a mistake. I'm going to make 200,000. I put in 52 here. Open a tab. I do 52. Everything seems good, so I'm going to go up here, and then I'm going to say solve for n. It's going to give me an error. Mwah. Something's wrong here. This is what commonly happens to students. Remember I said one of these has to be negative. So it doesn't matter. What if I just make this one negative? Now watch. Now I can do it. Boom. So remember I just said one of them just had to be negative. So I get 1414.169, let's just say, right? So 1414.17, let's just say. 
well, wait a second. That's not equal to this many years. No, that's because this is the amount of payments you've made. That's that's this n. n is 1414, but the number of years is contained with this. In other words, we have to divide. That was the sneaky part. We had to divide by 52 because there's, this is a total number of payments you made. But you do 52 each year. So that's why that one is a little bit sneakier. You had to do this right here. Divide by 52. So we take that number then. Let's just escape here. So we'll say our 1414.17. We'll divide that by 52. Ah, now we got a 27.2, which is the number of years. So we've solved it two ways. You notice then, so you don't ever have to solve it twice. Just get used to one way of solving and do it. Okay, so I've taken exactly twice the amount of time it takes on each of these questions. I just want to show you how you can solve it two ways. Pick whatever way you like. Just be consistent. Just be really good at using one of the ways, okay?